Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about how understanding um, our universal will does not equal fatalism. Um, before we get into that, I just want to like talk a bit about why this show is important, <clears throat> why I'm doing the show. Basically, you know, to the extent that we, um, as a, as a world, accept and um, and um, act according to this belief in free will, we'll blame others and ourselves <coughs> for things that. Um, that we're absolutely compelled to do. When we do things that are good or great, we'll, we'll become arrogant or conceited. We'll, we'll think we're better than others. Um, it, it, it just like, this belief in free will just, it's really, it's collective insanity. It's a delusion, you know, it just doesn't exist. And to the extent we get this right, the universe, you know, God willing compels us to get it right then we can create a much, much more intelligent, um, compassionate, understanding um, world, you know, personally and societally. I've done shows on this. All right, all right let's get into this. All right, well, now, um, basically the, the reason, the two reasons that, um, two ba basic reasons free will is impossible, you know, I, wanted, I like to go over this um, first in each show. Um, the first um, thing is causality. Everything has a cause. You know, nothing happens that's uncaused. There's, sometimes you, you hear people talk about randomness, but um, randomness is an incoherent term. Randomness literally would mean without a cause, and that's why it's incoherent. You know, there is no true randomness. I could, like, I could present a deck of cards to you, <laughs> and you could pick one out at random, okay? In other words, without a plan or whatever, but Many physicists and philosophers take randomness in its strongest sense, not just apparent randomness, um, but in the strongest sense of uncaused. And um, so that naturally, um, you know, randomness wouldn't give you free will either. Um, okay. So here's the thing. Um, when, when you talk, when... Um, when people are presented with the truth, with the reality that um, that everything's a movie, that you know, that nothing is really up to us, we're like playing out the the hand of fate. You know, we're like we're manifesting God's will. Call it what you will. Um, nothing is up to us. And when people at first hear that, before they kind of like really think it through, they they. Um, it's kind of like, you know, it leads to like a fatalist, fatalistic um, misunderstanding of the situation, I think. Um, basically, I want to describe what, what fatalism means um, <clears throat> generally as, as, as most people use it. Um, fatalism means that like, well, if everything's predetermined, if, if, ever, if everything's faded, if, if nothing is up to us, What's the point in doing anything? Why wake up in the morning? Why do anything? Okay? That's the basic fatalist position. And it's kind of like um, unoptimistic, you know, not a very pleasant position. And um, so, yeah, when people equate this lack of free will with fatalism, you could see how, um, how they, you know, they're not going to... Um, kind of appreciate the benefits of, of giving up free will um, because of this, this fatalist um, perspective. Okay, let me um, basically, we are compelled, all right, we're compelled by nature, by God, by causality um, to seek pleasure and avoid pain. Okay, that's our base, that's who we are, that's what we do. Okay. Um, yeah, sometimes we'll undergo some pain to create a uh, pleasure for, um, for, let's say, for our future or for others. And a lot of times when we do that, we kind of like expect that we're doing a good thing, so that will lead to greater 
pleasure for us in the future. You know, it's like this reward and punishment thing. So, um, so yeah, um, the idea w w with fatalism, uh, let's see. Okay. Um, with fatalism, you, you, you say to yourself, doesn't matter, you know, what, what's the point of anything? But it does matter, okay? It does matter because of this reward and, and, and punishment thing. In other words, like, um, the universe will sometimes compel us to do something that we or other people consider wrong or, or that is, like, not beneficial to us, um, you know, you stub your toe on a piece of furniture, you, um, you kind of, um, <clears throat> you lie to someone, okay? You, you, you hurt someone's feelings or something. You know, the universe tends to do that with us sometimes. <laughs> and then it will um, punish us, you know, in that, in that case. In other, in other cases, it'll, it'll um, make us do something good, something right something other people will appreciate or the universe rewards. So, um, so the idea is that um, when you have a fatalist stance, um, it's kind of like you're, you're, <coughs> you're, you're taking yourself out of the experience of it because like really the idea of, of like, fine, we don't have a free will, but but no, that's not a reason to, to say to yourself, well, you know, nothing I do matters because it does matter. You know, when you do good, when you when you do things that, that are, are good for yourself, good for the world, the, the world rewards, the universe rewards. When when you don't, you know, you, you risk um you risk being punished. And that's the key. You know, um and it's even more than that, you know, like um you know, again, uh a, a very common kind of like phrase or, or, or something you hear with, with fatalist position is like, you know, well, why do anything? You know, why do anything? You know, if, if everything is predetermined, if we don't have a free will, you know, that's the fatalist position. And aside from this hedonic imperative of always seeking pleasure and, and avoiding pain, um, we can't but to do things. Try. I mean, I meditate a lot. Um, sometimes I'll meditate for an hour or two at a time, um, sometimes longer. But even, even meditating sometimes as um, short a time as 5, 10, 15 minutes is difficult. <laughs> it's difficult because basically, you know, whether we want to or not, um, our mind is designed to do stuff. That's why it's so hard to meditate for many people. And incidentally, that's actually why so it's been so beneficial. Because with meditation, you, um, we have a kind of anxiety that, that comes to a great extent from just life in general and um, from our civilization. You know, the, just, um, it's a brand new world and, you know, like, we're a species that's a few million years old. We're just having to go through a lot of changes in a um, very brief period of time, and that creates kind of like challenges which can manifest in anxiety. So, um, all right. <laughs> um, let's see. So the thing is like, all right, fine. We, we understand that free will is impossible. You know, you have to make that understanding. You have to understand that because everything has a cause, free will is impossible. There's no way, there's absolutely no way that any of us can or can ever have free will. Because, you know, unless, the only way we could have a free will is if the laws of nature, like gravity, um, the arrow of time, motion, change, if that was to change, and, and even that, you know, I don't, I don't even think that would grant us uh, free will because, like, causality, again, you have to understand that change is the basic process to anything that, you know, that we can call the universe or existence, you know, because, like, if there was no change, everything would be frozen, nothing would be happening. So I guess, yeah, <laughs> no, no, even that wouldn't give you a free will. So, like, yeah, so, like, <clears throat> the idea is, like, with change, um, 
it, um, it's the fundamental process of reality and it requires causality. In other words, change is like one thing, one particle, one molecule, the universe, whatever you want to you know, um, measure or perceive being at one place at one moment and at another place the next moment. That's change and that's causal. There has to be a reason why something, the universe, a particle is at one, you know, it's, it's like the basic laws of nature. It's like momentum. It's like, um, you know, particle interaction. It's, you know. <laughs> All right, so, so basically, yeah, the idea is that um, the, the, the change is so fundamental that, you know, um, that free will must, must be an illusion. So, so, so to the extent that we can, like, understand that um, fatalism is not the logical um, correlate, the logical extension of, of um, logical conclusion of, of, of believing that, um, that, we have a, um, that we don't have a free will, then I think to a lot of people that, that, might, um, that might make more sense. Okay, um, yeah, fatalism leads to, you know, inertia, apathy, whatever. It's a kind of like, it's like, fatalism is saying, well, it's not up to me what I do, so I'm not going to care what I do. <laughs> All right, I got to like, even with fatalism, the, the funny thing, the, the very curious thing about this whole thing is like, you know, it's not our choice to get this human will thing wrong. We're compelled. The universe makes us get it wrong. And the universe now is also <laughs> making us like buy into this fatalist thing that, um, that because we don't have a free will, um, you know, nothing's worth whatever. And it, it's just like, it's like, I mean, <laughs> why would the universe do that to us? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, you, you would hope that it's for a good reason, but, but it seems that um, the universe now, it seems clear the universe is like saying, all right, fine, we, we, had, <laughs> um, we had you all believe, or it had you, us all believe that we have a free will, and that like that, um, fatalism is just not, you know, pleasant kind of a thing to, to believe in all. And now, you know, through Sam Harris's book and, and my book and this show and our show in Manhattan and just Scientific American coming out with um, a couple of um, articles about it and, you know, well, there's, there's been several articles in, in, the, in the press, actually. But with all this attention on, on the topic, um, now the universe is saying, fine, um, we had you believe a certain way in the past, now you believe a different way. And th th this isn't new. I mean, like, you know, a um, long time ago, you know, our, our, our you know, male-driven society wouldn't, wouldn't allow women to even vote, you know, wouldn't educate women, you know, under, under the, the delusion that women were either unintelligent or weren't to be trusted with this knowledge. I mean, hey. <laughs> and so, like, you know, so, so the universe does this. The universe make, made us think that um, the world was flat when, when it's an orb. Um, why does that? I don't know. But, but again, um, we, should, um, we should feel good that we're getting this right. Um, okay. It's, we've got about 13 minutes to go, and I think I've exhausted this. I think I've exhausted it. I, I, I was a little reluctant to do this show. I'd, I'd prepared it, you know, weeks ago because there's just not much to say about it, but, you know, having said that, what, what one does say about it is important. In other words, it's important, it's very important not to equate free will or lack of free will with the idea that it just doesn't matter what I do because of that, okay? It's very important, but, but again, one, having said that a few times in, in several ways, we've covered it. All right, which leads me to, to kind of like figure out what we're going to spend the next, um, about 13 minutes talking about. Um, okay. Yes. Um, I don't know. Um, I guess one thing I want to talk about is just like how 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 revolutionary this is. Um, you know, we're we're. Um, 
We tend to talk about this from from a scientific perspective. Um, you know that 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 free will is illogical. Free will is unscientific. Free will is impossible. You know because of the laws of nature, causality, and our unconscious and and, and stuff like that. But. Um, But we, we don't we don't fully appreciate um, we don't fully appreciate just um, that that we are kind of like part of this in a, in a sense we're, we're part of this this universe we're not the controlling part but but that we we um, we we make oh no. Nah. Now, um, let me let me start again. Wait a minute. Okay. Um, the really, I mean, the really cool thing about this is think about it. You know, we're we're moving from a collective delusion that is really harmful, um, that is just like you know, completely opposite to the way things are, to to a, to the to the exact opposite perspective, you know, to to the perspective that that that, hum, that free will is impossible, and nothing this big has ever happened in the history of the world. I mean, you know, you had people like Buddha. I, I tend to be, you know, I'm, I'm born Jewish. I, I kind of like see myself as a, as a Jew in a way, but but I also, you know, I respect Buddhism because, like, you have like. These guys like the Buddha, and also Jesus and Moses, all these guys, Muhammad. Um, these guys did, you know, great things for the world, I think. You know, just because b before religion, you have to realize there was no organized morality. Um, I, I, I'm only guessing. I, I, I think, on balance, religion historically has, has been better for the world than, than, um, than less good. Um, but, but now... Um, now we're getting to um, to a point where, yeah, in religion, it's just not that way anymore. It's just like you know, um, it's you know, religion a religion that that pits people against each other, you know, that that tells kids under five years old that if you misbehave, you risk suffering um, the rest of eternity, you know, in, in some hellfire. I mean, that's sick. That's just like, you know, and again, you can't blame, you know, that's, that's the wonderful thing about this understanding the free will perspective. You might say that that's a sick thing to do, but you don't blame the people that are doing it. You don't blame the, the, the religious figures who came up with this. They were doing the best they could, you know. Um, but, but the thing is, all right, this, this is a scientific truth, and it represents so aside from all the, the goodness that um that religions have done this represents a leap it an evolutionary leap okay you have you have human beings now that that you know everything we do everything we do is is um, premised on on a mistaken notion on a mistaken conclusion you know that we have a free will and so when I, I would say this this can't take longer than like five ten years. I would think you know with, with the, uh, I mean it, it could happen much sooner. It could happen within a, a year or two. But within, within our very connected world, you know the internet. We're like you know this show. Once I once I get it up on the internet, it, it's, it's seen all, all over the world, anywhere. Um, with the world that we have today, I mean like we can relatively soon um, just really get this right and and it really it defines us as a, as a new species okay because you have to realize I've, I've done a show on this but um i want to reiterate it because it just it just goes to the it, it it speaks about the importance of of this um basically we tend to see evolution in physical terms you know we we, we stand up more upright you know we lose our hair our brains are a bit bigger. We have different physiological changes. You know, if there's enough of a difference between one group of, of you know early humans and another, that's when we change the name of the you know of the spe species, Homo sapien, um, 
something it was I don't know what was before that <laughs> but uh you know and then there's like you know Neanderthal and um Cro-Magnon and all that stuff but but I think this is species wide I think this is like you know um what I'm trying to say is like aside from these physiological changes that uh, warrant species change this is a psychological change but it, it's 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 on a much grander scale than than physiological changes. I mean, certainly some physiological changes, like, you know, let's say not having ears and eyes and, and stuff when, you know, and then suddenly have them, though, that's, that's got to be super major. But, you know, we're not doing that right now. I mean, <laughs> it could be, it could be we're developing kind of like a, an intuition, a knowing that we just know that who knows how we know, but, um, but that's, you know, that's speculative. So, so yeah, this, um, this is huge. This is the biggest thing that's ever happened on the planet. And, um, and it's cool that it's happening now because, um, you know, you've got this Occupy global revolution of the 99% against the 1%, which is necessary if we're going to battle and um, do the best we can against climate change. And it's also necessary if we're going to, like, um, you know, create a, a good and fair world where, you know, where 1% of, of the people just don't have so much wealth and power and are corrupted by it and corrupt the rest of the world with it. I mean, it's in a, there's, you know, I don't want to like... And again, <laughs> from this perspective, you don't blame them. You don't blame them because they don't have free will. But, but this Occupy Revolution is about taking the inordinate power and wealth from them. And it's the fact that no one has a free will that that forms a basic principle of this of this revolution. Um, in other words, like the way the way it's generally framed in, in the debate is that if we don't have a free will, then we can't blame ourselves and others for what we do. You know, and that makes sense. But what's much more rarely talked about, and I think it's probably because of the um, socioeconomic implications is that um, we can't rightly credit um, anyone, you know, for what they do above, you know, someone else. In other words, like Bill Gates, um, anyone you want to name that, 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 you know, has done something um, good, great, um, made a lot of money, just uh, been successful in whatever way, uh, accumulated a lot of power, it wasn't up to them. So just, just as like, we don't blame each other and ourselves when we do something wrong. We don't credit each other and ourselves when we do something right. And what does that do? That means that, all right, we, um, we have the, these resources, resources in the earth, the natural resources, um, societal resources. And under the free will perspective, we distribute these resources based on merit, you know, a person deserves to have more than another because of what they did. Under the free, free will perspective, that's, that's the way it works. When you understand that free will is, is impossible, it's not the way it is, that rationale no longer holds up. I mean, um, somebody like Gates, you might want to like, you know, if somebody's good in computers, you might want to like, give him access to the computer so he can do great f things for the world, but you don't have to pay him billions of dollars, you know, to do that. Um, the, global <clears throat> the global Occupy Revolution is going to be about equality and about fairness and about the welfare of everyone versus the welfare of just a few and the rest of the people are just like, you know, they're on their own. And that's, you know, that's the way it is now. So, like, you know, this Occupy Revolution is about making things fairer. And again, you know, it's like if nobody has a free will, it's a perfect um, guiding principle, founding principle for, for the new kind of world that, um, that we're creating. Okay, what else? Um, I don't know. I'm just going to talk about whatever. I'm kind of like... <laughs> um, this is cool. Actually, like... The shows are getting tougher to do. This is show number 55. You know, I would guess that when I first started doing these shows, most people would have said, nah, how, how much can you say on this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, I've got a creative mind. I can't take credit for it. It's a sharp mind. 
it sees um, things globally and, and, and whatever. And and there's a lot to this. So like what what's happening, what's happening in my life is like I'm going from explaining this, you know, throughout a lot of the show to to kind of like you know living it. In other words, like okay, like for example, when we pray, I just did a show on this. Um, I guess it, it aired last week. Um, you know, when we pray to God, you know, we, we're praying in the present. And that, that just doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's, basically, I think what I'm trying to say is that um, it's one thing to know that free will is an illusion, that everything's a movie. Uh, it's another thing to really um, to be guided by that knowledge. To every time that you um, find yourself becoming angry at anyone for anything, you remind yourself, whoa, I shouldn't be angry at this person. You know, it wasn't their fault. And then, then you know, here's something I'm struggling with now. Um, I'm not angry at the person, right? But, but then I become angry with the universe. Why did the universe make this person or me or whatever do something that we find wrong or objectionable? And, and I got to struggle with that. I mean, like, you know, if we define the universe as God, as we did last show, then, like, I don't want to blame God either. So then the question becomes, is the universe or God as compelled as we are? Does the universe or God have a free will? And um, I would hope not, because that way we don't have to blame them, God, the universe, for how we treat animals, for 30,000 kids dying every day of, of, of poverty. You know, there's a lot that's wrong in the world that could be better and so to the extent that um, we understand that free will is an illusion it's not the way things are we can go about creating a better world without the negative distracting influence of blame and all that okay I hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you next time thanks <laughs>